Was it hard not to argue when there's when you're starting a company and there's creative differences? I mean, how did you learn? Because that must have been you had never in idea. my life, never. I was extremely shy. I really wouldn't talk to people. I didn't want to talk to people. I didn't want to have confrontation, which is arguments. And um, no, and we might have differences of opinion, but I would never ever take a strong "you're wrong." Never you're hmm. wrong. Almost Did, never. Almost never. I mean, there's some extreme cases, maybe. Yeah, I heard but, something like you threatened to walk from Apple. Something about the production of the Apple two or three or. Yeah, they wanted it? to. Phony uh, story. Phony story. And phony I know story. How it came about. Yes, we had a shareholders meeting. The Apple II, my Apple II, was all mine, was all of the income of Apple for the first 10 years of the company. What gave Apple the springboard to become what it is now? Okay, it was that product was important. It was bringing in millions of dollars a month. All the revenues of the company, we had, a, we had just introduced the Macintosh. We had a shareholders meeting. All you heard, Macintosh, 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 Macintosh. They didn't mention the Apple II once. Okay, and so after the shareholders meeting, I, walked, I went back to the Apple II III building, nice triangle building on 280. And uh, the, the, Apple, the, the great people that ran that division and the engineers on the Apple II side were just storming. They were just so mad. They were, they were talking about ready to quit because they'd been so insulted by like, being treated like they were nothing. That's how Jobs treated it. The Macintosh is everything. And Apple II, they're bozos. And, and they were threatening to quit. Well, they don't have a voice that I have. So I called up John Scully. I kind of blamed him. I don't know what's coming from Jobs. I called up John Scully, and I just read him, you know, the, the book from my perspective, and these are good people, and they're being forgotten, and, and that's just wrong. And John, John said, well, we mentioned Apple II twice. I don't know where it was. It must have been some little double this and yeah, this and this. Footnote, yeah. And I hung up on him. He was our CEO. I hung up on him. But I just did it so he'd know how we were feeling, the others in, in my division. And, after, and then the Wall Street Journal called. And they got wind of this this um, disagreement or whatever. And I said, no, I'm leaving to start a new startup company to build the first universal remote control for TVs, VCRs, um, laser discs, which nobody in America had hardly. Um, there was only one hi-fi that had a remote control, and I had it, a Bang & Olufsen. And I had a satellite dish that built myself, big, huge dish. There were no satellite subscriptions <laughs> yet. And so I had five controls. How do you reduce them to one? So I started a company. And I went on Blackboard and showed the Apple engineers in my division what I was planning to do so they'd know that I wasn't undercutting Apple or doing something <laughs> Apple would want to do. Wrote me the nicest letter, kept me on the payroll even, kept me as an employee. But the Wall Street Journal called and they said, uh, you know, and I told them what I was upset about at the shareholders meeting. And they, they wrote that that was why I was leaving. And I said, no, it's not why I'm leaving. I'm leaving to do this new project, a new startup. And they wrote it the other way. And Steve Jobs really believed that I was, uh, you know, against the company. And and but he, he didn't have the wherewithal to see that I was still an employee. And it was really funny because after we were building that remote control, we had the plastic pieces. And well, we went to Frog Design to make the plastics. Frog Design was Apple's big design people that Steve Jobs liked a lot. And I said, "You do projects for other companies?" Yeah. So we had them design some possible remote control shapes. And then I heard the head of Frog Design talking to my partner, Joe Ennis, on the phone. And the head of Frog Design told how Steve Jobs came by on his bicycle one day. And, and the head of Frog Design, Hermit Esslinger, or whatever his name was, showed him, showed him the, the remote control and said, look what we're doing for your partner, Steve Wozniak. And Jobs threw it against a wall. He said, put it in a box and ship it to me. I own everything you do. Or Apple owns everything you do. I listened and heard those words. What human being, what decent human being could ever, ever do something that way? You know, I would never bring up a kid to be that way or encourage anyone else to, to be that kind of a person. Wow. Um, that, that was, that was, that's, you know, <coughs> you know, you, you run into, um, I don't know, narcissism. I'm in control of everything. Sure. Nobody, was he know. always that way? Like, because you knew him when you guys, when did you guys first meet? First of all, the world knows about two Steve Jobses. Mm-hmm. Steve Jobs, one was ruthless, a lot of people did a lot of nasty things. But he was good to some people sure. that were important to him, good engineers and whatever. He was actually good and never did something like that directly to me, except a couple incidents, I just described one. Mm -hmm. um, and then he went away and he came back, Steve Jobs too, and he was a little more refined. Mm. And I don't even know if that's true, because there were still some things going on that were very jobs -ish. just somebody walks in an elevator and just what they're wearing, you're fired. That would, still, that would still happen. So, But I knew Steve Jobs zero for five years before Apple. We were friends. He'd come into town every so often, see my latest invention, and turn it into money for both of us. Um, so that was, uh, we had a good relationship. I and mean, we'd played pranks 
we played in the world. We played pranks on each other. Um, we joked around. We, um, the day I met him, he was 16 years old and had no albums. Okay, so I brought him to my house. I had every Bob Dylan album. And I let him read the liner notes and the interviews with Bob Dylan and then the lyrics to the songs, Desolation Row and songs like that. This became so important to us that his words had like life meaning. And so we, we followed up people that had Dylan memorabilia. We would drive long distances to meet with them. And, and then we would uh, go to concerts and everything, Dylan concerts. That was a big part of our life. So, but this is before Apple. Who you are in life gets formed. It's called personality. Your personality isn't going to change ever. Neither is mine. Neither is yours. Neither is yours. Right. When your your personality settles down between 18 and 23 years old, college years, and that's who you are going to be forever. Hmm. Now, Steve Jobs had always wanted a path to be somebody important <clears throat> in the world, but he didn't have any academic background. He's living on communes. He's like with, you know, nothing. Kind of had me was about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so he and he wanted a path to be someone. And now all of a sudden with my Apple II, big money was willing to be put into it. And uh, Steve Jobs is now founder of a company. He didn't have a title really, just founder of a company that had big money. This was how he was gonna spring into the world. You had to have a company, you had to make a lot of money, you had to become one of those important people. And he started just talking like all computer intelligence came from him. America. If you thought Jackass Forever was crazy, oh boy, do I have a show for you. It's a multimedia comedy show called The Bucket List Tour. And the stuff I filmed for this show is way too hot for Jackass. Like the general anesthesia bike ride, the vasectomy Olympics, and skyjacking. The footage is so intense, we have full-grown men passing out at almost every city this bus goes to. So if you think you can handle it, get your tickets right now at stevo.com. Yeah.